Hello, sweet souls, and welcome to the We Are The Medicine podcast. I am your host, Dania Anastasia. I am a spiritual being having a human experience as a planter of seeds, alternative medicine practitioner, and trail guide on the path of life. We Are The Medicine is an exploration of the human experience through our stories. Our stories heal. Our stories are our medicine. Our experiences are our medicine. This is how we learn, grow, inspire, expand, and connect. My hope is that you will listen for inspiration and deeper understanding of how your individual life plays a role in that of the collective. I also hope to engage you, the listener, in conversations around your own dinner tables, in cafes and boardrooms, so that we may all begin to hold space for one another. Welcome to the show. God knows the ego needs a lot of tea these days. So, Corey at a place is here with me. I am Dania Anastasia, and we are inviting the ego to tea. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Hi, Dania. I'm going to turn my chair so that I can see you so that we can actually have a conversation. Uh, so, being our first launch of the podcast, um, I think we should just get right into it. Why not? Okay. Um, so this is basically just a conversation between you and I and our egoic states. And I think what um, has been on my mind the last 24 hours, uh, we'll start there and we'll see where it goes. So I had an experience yesterday that um, when I was in the experience, and I was speaking with a client of mine. I didn't feel empowered. Like I didn't feel like what I was saying and how I was saying it was coming from me. And I noticed it, but I just kept going. And some little voice was saying, I don't think this is the right time. I don't think this is the right person. I don't think this is the right place. But I ignored it and I kept going. And when it was over and throughout the rest of the day, I had this sinking feeling in my gut. It just wouldn't go away. So, and I've been really diligent in practicing um, being aware and being in the present moment. However, what I came to realize yesterday was that I have been in my egoic state the last several days days in that I am so passionate about what I want to talk about and about my codependency mechanism of wanting to fix people, right? Mm -hmm. That I didn't even see what I was doing. Um, and just a little bit of a background on the, uh, what happened yesterday. I was with a client and I hadn't seen her in uh, months. And so um, she actually had said in her message, it'd be lovely to have some tea with you and kind of catch up. So when we sat down, um, I invited her to tell me what was going on with her. And instead of being present, fully showing up for her, I, my ego saw an opportunity to fix. To not to fix, to convince that I had the answers for her, that I knew what she was going through, that I could decipher what she was feeling. And in the back of my mind, my ego is like, yeah, and then you can get her to join your group, right? Which is, to which is dollar signs, which mm -hmm. is justifying why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that feels good to the ego. And this whole time, I'm not even realizing that I'm doing this. And I, I think my uh, Native American name at one point was she who makes people cry <laughs> because she started to cry and I could feel her being uncomfortable. Like I felt the uncomfortability level and I just kept fucking going like mm -hmm. a badger because some part of me wanted her to get it out. Nope. Some part of me not enjoyed seeing her cry, but enjoyed her release, mm -hmm. right? 
but it still didn't feel right. It didn't feel authentic. And um, so in the afternoon, I, um, I had the realization that because what I promote, I'm not practicing. What I speak about, I'm not practicing because I don't know what it means fully to let someone ask me for help, to let someone come to me as they are without my immediate excitability. Like I'm confused a little bit about being excited about what I'm doing and the passion I have for it and still remaining humble and allowing people to show up as they are where they are. So my immediate thought was, um, your brain kicked into the think mode. I'm going to think my way through what this person is bringing to me. I'm going to think how this impacts me and my bottom line. But at the same time, I'm going to think about how this is impacting her. And I'm going to think about her process through this. And thirdly, I'm going to think about how I can fix and solve, which is what the ego does to us is it puts us in that safe space of, I'm going to think about it instead of I'm going to feel my way through it. Like as humans, we are uncomfortable when someone comes to us without, we want to have that nature of reaction of fixing, of helping that comes from a very, very good place. I don't want to diminish someone wanting to help, but sometimes helping is just sitting quietly, letting the other person speak their truth. And, and that's hard to do. It's very that's hard really to do. Tough. It's very hard to do. But at the same time, there were like bells and whistles going off the whole time having this yeah. conversation with her. Um, she actually even said, I thought we were just going to catch up. Mm -hmm. And my response was, I don't do small talk anymore, right? This mm -hmm. isn't how I am in the world anymore. Right. And it immediately when I start talking that way, it's my ego. Mm -hmm. And it completely bulldozed my consciousness should just be present and instead the ego's like yeah but I'm so excited I'm so excited that I just I have to say everything now because if I don't she's not going to hear me mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is she never heard me anyway right. because she was not in the place to hear me she didn't come to me for that for that and my struggle with wanting to expand my services being the holistic practitioner of wanting to talk about the five body coaches about wanting to involve all of that in every session is just not applicable because not everyone can meet me in those place, place, places. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I was totally forcing her to get vulnerable. I was mm -hmm. forcing her hand and oh my God, at the end of it, I felt absolutely awful at what I'd done. So much so that I sent her a message yesterday and I apologize for my behavior because it was out of line and I was not in the moment. I was not in the moment. I was not allowing her res responses to guide me as to what to do next. Mm -hmm. And that it, it was a huge teaching lesson mm -hmm. for me, like huge. Um, and so this morning I've been practicing not feeling bad about it not beating myself up over it because it wasn't my consciousness doing it. I was being, and this is the part that I, I wanted your input specifically on is that when you're excited about something and when your passion overtakes your being, I literally feel like a balloon that's about to pop. I have so much fun talking about this. Um, that I kind of feel gypped if I don't get to. Mm -hmm. So maybe
maybe it's a because it, and, and I think I'm the same way. Like when I when I am passionate about something, um, I'm going to allow that to come out vocally and try to get other people to jump on board. And when they don't, for whatever reason, I take it very personally. I did something wrong. Um, not that my, you know, I, I still firmly believe in my heart and soul, like what I'm saying to be my truth. And the key word there is my truth. Mine is not someone else's. And having to take a step back and recognize that uh, my truth isn't theirs and that's okay. Maybe maybe they'll be there someday. Maybe they'll, they'll never get to their to that point because their truth is theirs. Their truth isn't mine either. And so I think sometimes when we're, when that passion is like, I think it's a good thing because it shows the other person that, um, that authenticity of what we feel and what we're saying and our thought process. Um, and I think that goes leaps and bounds to that other person. But sometimes like, physically maybe just sitting on your hands like sometimes like for me like if I if I change my posture or change the way that um I'm sitting so like when we were when we were talking earlier before we we started recording I had to physically walk away because everything that we were talking about I wanted to make sure that we got a recording up right and so I had to physically remove myself because (laughs) I'm getting so excited I'm not going to stop knowing that we need to get this recorded. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to remove myself. And I, and I had a thought process, go sit on your hands. Don't ask me why. I had this thought of just go sit on your hands and maybe that'll stifle some of the passion that is starting to come out of you. Well, and it's interesting you say sit on your hands because um, that's where we receive and energy leaves the body, right? True. So if your vibration is so yeah. high, like that's one way of literally – Stopping it. the energy from leaving the body so that you have it reserved for when you're ready to do the talk or, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, um, it's actually a practice, um, in a lot of meditations is how you have your hands. It really makes a difference. Um, so I think sometimes recognizing like, or even saying to the other person, what do you need from me in, in this exact moment in time? Like what I said to you. Exactly. What started this whole ago. entire journey. Exactly. What do you need from me? Do you need me just to sit here and let you say all of this and get it off your chest and offer a non judgmental place where you are able to do that? Or do you need feedback? Do you need um, advice? Like what, asking the other person, what do you need in this moment? Because I can guarantee you they've hardly ever been asked that. And I have found myself putting that into practice with others around me because my knee jerk reaction is to immediately throw myself into it and help and help to solve the problem. And I have to take that step back to recognize that they're not here for what I need. They're here for what they need. And so to stop myself and say, before you go any further, what do you need from me in this moment? and honoring them enough to give that to them. It, it is a, when you come from a place of wanting to help people because it's who you are at your core, which is an amazing quality to have. Sometimes we have to recognize when it's time, time and place to use that and when it's not. And that's really tough. Like that's our journey is to figure that out. And we're going to stumble. And we're going to fall flat on our face. And then we're going to pick ourselves back up. We're going to dust and we're going to learn from it. And we're going to take the next step forward. Yeah. And so it's all about remembering, right? It's remembering why you're in that space with that particular person at that particular time. And what I find is interesting is that I am forced forcing this egoic identity of holistic practitioner on people who are definitely not ready. And so I get hurt, right? I get 
disgruntled. I start to think, well, shit, maybe I'm not actually going in the right direction. Maybe this is not what I want to do. This is not working, right? But I'm, you can't force people to come to a place that they're not prepared for, they're not ready for, or that they're just not willing to climb into. And so a very dear friend of mine last night talked me off the ledge and said, the best way I can express how I behave when I fully show up for somebody in a treatment room is knowing that I am not only doing body work for this human, but I am doing soul work at a soul level, my soul to that soul on the table. They never need to know anything about it because it's when you're working on that level of the human being, they're either going to let you in or they're not. And if you are always coming from showing up for yourself to be able to show up for them, it's, she said, it's just the most, the most beautiful experience. You know, she's like, I literally, when I sit down and the first time I lay a hand on somebody, I say in my head, hi soul. This is my soul. We're going to spend the next hour together. And you're going to tell me what this person needs if they haven't verbally said it already. Mm -hmm. But I think your point of, uh, and I think the only time I've ever actually used that phrase was with you a month, six weeks ago when we had breakfast that you started sharing and immediately I must have been in a different level of frequency because I said, uh Oh, I found myself wanting to give you advice immediately and fix something. And I said, wait, what does she actually need right now? So I asked out loud, do you want me just to listen to you? Do you want me to just be present here for you? Or do you want me to offer some insight or whatever? And thankfully you said both because here we are. Uh, but well, and I think it was, you know, for me, and it, and it, it put, it put me back on my heels a little bit because it was this moment of, you know, we've known each other for years and there is no part of me that would ever hesitate in coming and seeking advice or help or whatever. I don't even think I realized what I needed in that moment until you phrased that question and it gave me that opportunity and, and there was and I'm, I'm starting to really become comfortable in those awkward pauses because that's exactly what happened because your question put me so back in myself of, holy, what, what do I need in this moment? I don't know if anyone had ever, I mean, I'm sure I've been asked that, but did I understand fully what that other person was asking of me? And I don't think I knew that until that moment of, what what do I need in this moment? It, it has nothing to do with the person that is sitting across from me. It could have been a complete and utter stranger, but it allowed me that opportunity to say, and really look inward and say, what do I need in this moment? And I don't think anyone had ever given me that power up until that point. And it's just that one small little thing has turned into, you know, it's like that, that small little stone that you throw in the lake and that ripple effect just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger from the tiniest, smallest little stone of when you're meeting someone exactly where they're at and exactly what they need. That was the beauty of that moment. And that's the, when, when I think about, we were talking this morning about um, remembering those moments that meant a lot to us, that put us in a very happy space, in a space of unconditional love. Until I started talking, I didn't realize that was my moment. Mm -hmm. Right? Ah, <laughs> uh, that is... So, <laughs> it's so cool. So yummy. That is so the reason why we're here. 
And that pebble and that ripple keeps getting bigger and bigger every day. That pebble and the ripples that it has created is a little bit bigger each day, each moment, each breath. Oh, sweet serendipity. The conversation I had with my girlfriend last night was about a lake. <laughs> and how I am really comfortable at the bottom of that lake. I am really comfortable digging up my box of treasures that I've buried. I am really okay with the darkness. I am really okay with excavating my life and remembering who the fuck I am, right? And having you say that about the pond, the lake, we literally using the word lake because it's usually pond, but the ripple. And she said, she's like, and sometimes you'll look up from the bottom of that lake and you'll notice someone's thrown stone and the ripple above you is your signal, is your energy reaching everyone that you possibly can in the way that they can receive. And I think, like, I'm, I'm someone that has to, for some reason, have to write everything down for A, either fear of forgetting it or just wanting to ingrain it into my brain because we are, we're rewriting all of our stories. And I don't remember how I remembered all these stories from way back when. But so in writing things down like that, I think that what um, really is magnificent is that feeling that you just gave me, the feeling that you just allowed me to have that I know exactly what my soul wants to do. And it's so often, so often because I forget the ego jumps in, kind of like pops his head around the corner and says, hey, remember, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, I got an answer for this. So this yeah. is what we said. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, you know what? It's time to just sit and drink your tea. You know, just sit this one out. Because I remember now, I remember why I'm here. I remember I am here to be loved. I am here to hold space here for when people want to share. And I think that's going to become part of my daily practice with my clients every single time so that I can remember <clears throat> um, the scenario. I can remember how I'm, how I want to show up for these people is when they do start to talk, or even if maybe it's the first thing I say to them, you know, how can I help you today? Um, are you, you know, when they and when they start talking, and before I start to say, well, you know, <laughs> I read a thing the other day, and this is what that said, and this is blah 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 blah. Before you know it, there's 30 minutes into it, and they're kind of looking at me like, I I just wanted a foot massage, like <laughs> that's all I really wanted. So what have I done? I have now just like puked all yeah. over them. They haven't heard a word I've said, but now I'm yeah. so excited about what I've said. And I, that's, that's the part of me, that excitement that I don't ever want to squash. And so I think in asking them, what is it that you need from me right now? Gives you, gives them the opportunity to say, like you just said, oh my God. No one's ever asked me what I need. No one has ever asked me what I need right now from the other person. That in and of itself may actually just spark the further conversation into what I'm so excited and passionate about, well, right? And I think it creates that opportunity for a, the natural progression of the conversation. And yes. it, it yes. carries more weight, it has more meaning and I think that that's the that's the key part is they are now going to instead of you know I've always said instead of me emotionally vomiting all over you it creates a space where um, they're open and ready to receive it because you've asked them now they have ownership in the conversation yes 
instead of just, okay, I'm just going to sit here and take this. Um, it gives that opportunity to have a real honest dialogue over what it is that I need. And sometimes it's going to be just very surface level, just make my body feel better in this moment. Because if I can't get my body to feel good in this moment, I can't begin to unpack my emotional boxes and my emotional traumas and or those physical traumas. I just need to feel a little bit better in my body in this exact moment in time. And maybe once I get that, all of those other pieces will begin to start to fall into place. Mm -hmm. And I have found myself now on so many occasions when my staff have come to me with whether it be issues in their own lives or issues that they're dealing with with clients what do you need from me in this moment do you want me to offer the advice of how to deal with this parent that is giving you struggles or do you just need to vent this out you know internally what the solution is but your brain is so wrapped up in the emotional pieces of trying to deal with another human being that is struggling on such a level that it triggers you. And so sometimes it's just real quick, this is why I'm feeling this way, this is, I need to vent this, I need to talk this out. And at the bottom of that, at the bottom of all of those emotions, all of a sudden they find the solution. And, and they didn't need a thing from me. No, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like you and I both had this situations where all we had to do was actually tell the story out loud and having ourselves hear it from our own mouths we're like oh that's what I got to do oh oh okay, it makes so much sense now that I say it out loud yes and so allowing someone the space to mm -hmm. say it out loud where they yep. won't be judged yep. but they will be held with compassion and love and no criticism um, because you're right they do know what's best for them and that's where the remembering is yep. right that's the crux of this is that, oh, and this is why it's so beautifully frustrating, our ego, because we give it so much power. We, because we've, we've learned it's literally, I'm 52. It's an ingrained response to keep me safe. How do I keep me safe? By being the first one to say something so that I don't feel stupid to be the uh, to be the fixer because then people will like me mm -hmm. to be the convincer because then they'll think better of me and it's all bullshit it's all just this ego spoon feeding that um, I am so so grateful for this conversation and for you and for the ability to come and meet at this level because this is what right now in my life brings me so much joy. Mm -hmm. It really does. And I think to not, here I go, I think, <laughs> I feel, you know, making a conscious decision of instead of thinking about my response, I'm just going to feel my response. And that's the beauty of the conversations that we have and that, that I've tried to have with as many people as I can around me because that is becoming my default now. I don't think about what my response is going to be. I feel it. And so the image that I that I keep that I've come to in the last few minutes, how many of us, myself included, my hand is raised, you're driving on the road and you have the music blaring and you're singing at the top of your lungs and the car to the to the side of you and behind you can see you singing like a crazy person and you don't care in that moment i'm going to blast this music and i'm going to sing can you imagine for one moment instead of blasting your music you just talk to yourself as you're driving down the road and you have that conversation out loud that we're having right now with yourself imagine the things that will come out of your mouth because you are not thinking about your response you are feeling your so yes, blast the music, but also at the same time, give yourself a moment when you're 
in your car or by yourself or whatever to have a conversation with yourself. And I would be curious what comes out. I'm going to piggyback on that and go one step further and say, you know, most of us, we all have cell, we all have smartphones these days. So um, what I find when I'm in that space um, actually just happened last week. Um, and it happens every time I'm in my car on a long drive, I will hit my recording button on my um, small little recorder app on my phone and I will talk and I will say exactly what's on my mind, regardless if it's about a client or podcast or the business or someone, some other situation. And because a, it helps me get it out of my head so that I can actually hear it later and, and listen to it because there's so many jewels and gems within your own conversation to yourself, but hearing your own voice, recording something and then playing back and hearing your own voice and the wisdom that is in your own voice for whatever situation, issue, problem that might be coming up is one of the most powerful tools you have. It's free. It's priceless because you will finally start to listen to yourself. I think the biggest crux that we have as humans is we feel we need to be heard by others. We need to be seen by others. And the bottom line is we have that craving because our soul is asking us to hear us, to see us. That's why we feel so undervalued. That's why we feel unheard and unseen because we're not hearing and we're not seeing ourselves. So, yeah, for anyone who's listening, you know, grab your microphone, grab your phone and talk to yourself. Just say whatever comes to mind whenever it needs to come up um, and then listen to it later that evening or that tomorrow or wherever it is, um, because I, I can guarantee you, um, you're going to be amazed at what you're actually saying. To yourself. And as you said that, so I have a recording on my phone um, that is exactly that I was listening to music coming into work and a particular song came on and I so what I've been dealing with in the last six months has been like my inner dialogue has said I just I want others to hear me and as I listen to this song and the recording that's on my phone is I don't need others to hear me I need to hear myself and it was this moment of I'm driving down the road and I, and I start crying as I'm making this recording because for the first time I changed it to, I don't need others to hear me. I need to hear me. And it was honestly, like probably if I were to listen, play that back at this point, it would the joy and happiness that you would hear in my voice. It's probably, it was probably one of my happiest moments that I've had in the last six months because it was this amazing realization. I need to hear myself. That's what's important. Yeah. And like a year ago, five years ago, yeah. you would have been like, Oh my God, this is so I crazy. This, this is no, so woo. -woo. That's yeah. why, why, why would why? you do that? Exactly. Why would you do that? I have more recordings on my phone now and I've actually had to download all of them three times in the last year because I filled up this recorder and this yep. recorder has like 999 gigs <laughs> worth of space. Like, and these recordings are not very long. They're like, you know, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Um, but most often they're under five minutes, but they're so frequent mm -hmm. then. And like we've talked before, you know, sometimes you're laying there in bed and you have these ideas and you're like, oh shit, I gotta grab my phone and say this out loud because if I don't, it's not even a matter of forgetting it, it's a matter of needing to hear yourself say it again. Um, and I don't think that there's anything um, egotistical about that. I think that it's actually allowing the ego a voice so that your soul and your ego can start working on the same team for thriving as opposed to just the ego coming from a place of protection and safety. Um, oh, yeah. Um, okay, so 
This brings us to the close of our very first podcast session. Um, and that wraps up another episode of We Are the Medicine podcast. Wanted to take a moment to thank you and to let you know that I am grateful and I appreciate you so much. I see you. I hear you. I do understand. If you feel called, subscribe to my channel, like, share, comment with it, and check out my website for future happenings, deniaanastasia.com. That's all for now. I love you so much. It's crazy.